This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Well, it would be nice to get away from all the fire and the flames. And there is definitely one way to do that. With an unhealthy dose of copium. That's right, throughout all the good and the bad news that rose up recently, there is a theory about Riot's MMO that slowly brewed in the background. And it all actually started five months ago. Right as the whole craze started around WoW Classic Hardcore. The entire thing got an awesome story of its own. It was a few months before BlizzCon when Blizzard decided to give WoW a whole new game mode. It was a hardcore version where if you died, you were dead and you had to delete your character. It was nothing revolutionary. But somehow it lined up with WoW's hype and it started getting a decent amount of traction. Traction, which ultimately sucked a lot of WoW's addicts right back into the game. Amplifying their unhealthy habits. Which was so absolutely awful. If anything, MMOs are known for destroying people's social lives and their health. But thankfully, at least one of these problems can be fixed with today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I know you MMO guys, all you ever have time for is to farm and complain about balancing, while having little to no time to take care of your dietary needs. Thankfully HelloFresh is here to help. HelloFresh is a subscription-based service that delivers fresh ingredients for full meals right to your doorstep, mitigating any need to order junk food and preventing you from becoming what we call in the business an MMO fiend. Each week you can pick from a menu with over 45 dining options and over 30 protein smart and calorie smart recipes. So no matter how varied your diet is, HelloFresh got you covered. All of which comes fresh, pre-portioned and with each recipe only taking 15 minutes to make. So you not only eat healthy, but efficiently too. Not to mention the pre-portioned packages greatly reduce your food waste. And as a bonus, included in every subscription box is a free breakfast. Sounds great, right? Now let me be real for a moment. My wife is a godly cook. Can I ever match her skills on my own? No. But with HelloFresh I can. It's easy. You just follow the recipe given to you. You can impress so many people with this very easily. So click the link in the description or scan the QR code to try HelloFresh right now. Choose from a lineup of quick and easy meals and by using my code POGNECRITFREE get your free breakfast in every box while your subscription is active. Many thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and now back to talking about MMOs. Don't worry, we are still on track to get to Riot's MMO. But first, we need to explain the entire situation with WoW Classic Hardcore. You see, WoW is kinda known for going in circles. People play the game, get addicted to it, they burn out after achieving their goals, they take a break for a year and then they repeat the cycle the next year. And it just so happened to be that when one of these cycles started repeating, an originally fan-made game mode of Hardcore started getting popular. So later Blizzard turned it into an official one, even though they were slightly late to the party. The thing is, this didn't stop a lot of people from still picking up the game. Including someone like me. I got my druid to level 50 on EU without dying, and then a somewhat known streamer decided to make his own Hardcore guild on the US server. At first, the idea of joining their guild entertained my mind, but I still wanted to focus on my original character. But then, a lot of my friends started joining. The entire thing started snowballing and eventually some really big streamers hopped on too. I mean, honestly, I did not expect someone like Pokimane to even give it a shot. Although, truth be told, a lot of these streamers just got to level 5 and then quit. The point is, with this wave of big streamers trying the game, WoW Hardcore got a decently big, albeit short-lived, fame. And while to many this big boom was seemingly a big spectacle on the surface, I mean it was a gold mine for funny content, in reality something cooler was happening just below the surface. Because while everyone thought this was just a streamer thing, the truth is, a lot of devs loved diving into this one too. And the ones that stood out the most to me were, of course, some pretty high-placing people at Riot Games. 
Now, at first, you might start getting a hint as to where I am going with this. But at face value, this doesn't really mean much. The Riot Games devs playing WoW a lot doesn't mean that Riot's MMO is gonna go in the same footsteps. Right? Right? Well, the idea quickly took some turns when people noticed that one of these people was Mark Merrill, aka Trindamir, who first posted a screenshot of getting his druid to 52 on a US server, which was then followed with a screenshot where he made it to level 60. Now, in case you don't know, assuming he played normally, it takes a long time to actually get to 60. Like, this is a multi-week commitment. And the funny thing about this one is that he dinked level 60 on a laptop in Korea while he was at Worlds. I'll be honest, that is definitely one way to play hardcore WoW. Who would do such a thing? Anyway, here is where we need to dive into some very important facts. If the recent news proved anything, it's that people love to talk about managing people at video game companies, right? Well, in Trindamir's case, the entire journey is quite unique. See, together with Brandon Beck, also known as Rise, Trindamir first co-founded Riot Games to make League of Legends. After many years of working on the game, eventually the two co-founders retired, which is when they took more of a background role at Riot Games. But not too long after that, Trindamir actually decided to go back to development. And so he took on the role of president of games at Riot Games, which means that he would be a lot closer to the development of all the games that are going on at Riot. In a way, you can see him as the person who oversees the game genres and directions of their games. So now, do you pick up why this is important? From what was teased in the past, it seems like Trindamir was one of the people who initiated the idea of experimentation with the MMO. Contrary to what people may think, Ghostcrawler wasn't actually the only one who pushed for the MMO. Which would also indicate that with Trindamir being a fan of the classic old school styled MMOs, it would be very likely for Riot's MMO to approach the classic formula of MMOs which people call theme parks. And what's crazy about this one is that currently there are no other developers who would really be trying to approach this. For some reason, everyone is trying to experiment and reinvent the MMO wheel in some way. Be it with changing worlds, gacha-like progression loops, or fully procedural dungeons and loot. Nobody is really focusing on the classic pre-built world with prepared instanced encounters and preset loot tables. And in many ways, it makes sense for Riot to return to this classic formula. Because after nearly 15 years, after going through many different iterations, which left WoW in a very different state from where it was originally, WoW released its classic version which very quickly became the most popular MMO in existence again. Like classic WoW was just WoW again and again it broke the records. This is why if Riot is going for this, it is a very clever move. So Riot might be trying to approach this uncharted modern territory with a very hungry audience. Which is also an audience that is very unlikely to get any kind of food unless we count uh, Season of Discovery. That one is absolutely awesome, although the gaps in content are getting a bit too long. Also, the funny thing is that even if their sustenance becomes Riot's MMO, uh, they are still not getting that food in a while. Now, if this was the only hint of the case that Riot is returning to the classic formula with MMOs, this theory wouldn't have too much of a footing. Which is where the second half of this theory arrived. That being Ghostcrawler leaving Riot. When this happened, it was quite unexpected to everyone. Ghostcrawler was always seen as one of the biggest connections players had to the MMO. And as the project started rolling, he mentioned that this was probably going to be his last big passion project around gaming. After this, he would be done. Now the reasons for this were never 100% confirmed, but we were given a few hints. Partially it was because of personal reasons. Partially it is because big companies tend to move slowly, while he wanted to push for the MMO a lot faster. 
And partially, it was hinted that it could have been because of creative differences. Ghost Crawler simply wanted to push the MMO in a specific direction, with everyone else having different ideas. This of course would then loop back to the fact that if every decision had to be approved on some level, the entire company would slow the project down. Well, after taking all of this into consideration, if you then look at what MMO Ghost Crawler's team is making, some people thought everything started lining up. Because Project Ghost, as they dubbed it, is not an MMO that would entirely follow the classic formula. The entire game is divided into two halves, which they call the Shards. In one of these, every player will get their own randomly generated world, similar to Valheim or Minecraft. And after you've done some farming and leveling up, you can then take all your loot into the share world in the other shard, which is a fully designed open world with dungeons and raids just like what you would expect in other MMOs. So the idea is that you farm some base level gear in your generated world and then you take it all into dungeons and raids. For some people, the issue here is that this isn't exactly the classic formula they were looking for. Many people simply wanted the true and tested theme park. And so, a theory was born. What if the fact that Trindamir is a bit more involved in Riot's MMO, combined with the fact that he is seemingly a fan of the classic WoW formula, combined with the fact that Ghostcrawler left Riot after pushing for a bit more modernized kind of MMO, means that Riot's MMO is trying to go the classic route. The one that people know works and which has little to no competition. If you combine it with the fact that in all of these interviews, the Riot MMO team always said that they are ready to listen to people and they are ready to focus on what people simply want to see the most, I think we all know where a lot of the feedback will line up. Truth be told, the MMO genre has suffered a lot from a lot of falls over the years. Right now, a lot of people are kinda tired of massive innovations. Because so far, and I wish I was joking about this, no other MMO that tried to be different ever succeeded. This is by far the most challenging hill in the history of gaming. So I'm not only curious to see if Ghost manages to be the first one to break through, but I'm also curious to see if Riot realizes the gap in the MMO genre. And if the goal is to directly dethrone classic WoW, which has proven to be the king of MMOs twice already. Once in 2004 and the second time in 2019. And funnily enough, the numbers had shown that season of discovery is kinda going hard. So right now it might be the ruling king for the third time, although it may be because people are not really playing other MMOs. Well, truth be told, whatever the outcome is going to be, it's going to be a while until we learn anything at all. So right now, we still don't know much, and all of this is just a theory. All I know is that we all really needed some copium to get away from reality. 